here to talk today about um, the issue of um, our infrastructure on our scheme infrastructure on fresh passage and how we're going to go about managing that. Um, so what do I mean by scheme infrastructure? I'm talking about um, uh, structures that are here primarily or in place primarily as a purpose to create a hydrological um, disconnection. Um, that's in order to protect human life and property or it might support agricultural land use. Um, so those are um, functions that the Regional Council is legally required to provide. Uh, the problem, um, you've probably seen a few of these slides in this session, um, but a lot of our native fish are um, diatomous, and so a hydrological disconnection is not good for their um, life cycle, basically. So I'll uh, just uh, put up one of our most uh, widespread ones in our drainage schemes at least is the um, eel and they have a life stage where eggs are laid at sea um, in these various um, stages before they come back into fresh water as glass eels um, develop into algae then finding um, the adult habitat somewhere. And so our infrastructure is really blocking um, this movement into the adult habitat and it's also um, at the end of their life cycle, which can range um, I don't know, maybe a decade through to maybe a hundred years, um, and a blockage in that once in a lifetime opportunity to get downstream and breed. So there's two locations where there's a problem. And just to try to describe our infrastructure, um, basically they will involve a stop bank, that's the main um, structure preventing water movement, and then there'll be some sort of gateway. And the simplest one of those will be a stop bank. Uh, sorry, a floodgate, and so it's basically just a pipe, and then um, a flat gate at the end, and everything's fine um, at normal flows or at low tide. But when the tide comes up, that gate will shut, and there is no fish passage obviously at this point. But uh, at some times, there will be some degree of fish passage depending on what that cold water gate will look like. Um, if you have uh, other situations where the kitchen's rather large, there's no capacity to store that water while the gate's closed, there will have to be a pump in place, and that will actively pump water over the stop bank or through the stop bank at times while that gate's closed. Um, and then again, when the water levels recede downstream, that gate can open and that's working with the gradient, just like the flat gate area, essentially. And uh, I guess the final um, situation is where the upstream water levels are being maintained lower than the downstream water levels. So they're Basically, there's a constant um, pumping going on. So the only way is into the system is over the stop bank, and the only way out is through this pump. And the problem with the pumps, um, as we've found out, is that they were designed um, to be highly efficient at moving water. They were never designed to move um, anything that was alive. And so one of the problems we have is this um, incidence of fish mortality. And it happens when, at the same time that um, in the sort of late summer autumn, when the migrant eels are trying to head downstream for that once in a lifetime breeding opportunity, they are queued in by a flood. The floods are exactly when the pumps are operating or when the flat gates are closed, and um, you get um, undesirable outcomes like disease. And it's one such incident um, that sort of keyed off um, us identifying this as a major issue and even dealing with in the work of So. What we started off with was commissioning a review. What we wanted to do was look at um, assessment of this effect across, um, we've got 131 pump stations, we've got over 500 structures, so we wanted to have a look at what the assessment of that sort of effect would be. We wanted to look at that effect in a legislative context, and we also wanted to review what remedi remediation options are out there. And because it's not just an issue for the Waikato region, we involve 10 councils through the River Managers Forum, which will be a good uh, project. So in terms of the assessment of the effects, we consulted with our own operations team, uh, consulted across the contributing councils, uh, consulted with DOC, Fish Passage Advisory Group, and the Icons River Group. And there was also quite a bit of international literature review, because um, obviously um, this is an issue um, globally, so we had a look at a bunch of legislation here, these two are here about um, supporting putting infrastructure in and maintaining infrastructure, then there's also um, these sort of uh, regulations and acts looking at um, sustainable and um, better use of fisheries and um, protecting fisheries, those sorts of things, reducing effects. 
And then this is increasing EWI governance um, legislation or plans or treaty plans that are um, taking a bigger and bigger role in how we manage our um, fishery and resources. So the outcome of that review is the effect is real and probably underreported. I'll give an example here. This is um, an incident where we had a fish kill caused by very low pH, and those fish drifted down the drain into the pump intake. And the other thing the low pH did is it actually flocculated the water. So normally you can't see more than a couple of centimetres into our drain, but here you can see about half a metre, probably more. And you can see we've actually, it's not big chunks of eels, it's actually just flesh in this layer across the bottom um, of what you're looking at. So it's not immediately obvious, it could be going on and you can't even see that there's um, eels there down the drain. The other outcome is there's a strong uh, legislative and policy directive to provide safe fish passage. Um, then we went on to uh, look at the options, and that was describing them, uh, looking at their pros, cons, the constraints, um, and estimating the costs. That's very important. So um, you could look at something quite simple with a fish pass, that's great. Um, so you just basically create a channel or some sort of um, structure that diverts water around and it can take fish up, and fish can come down as well quite safely. A um, couple of things, they seem to be quite expensive to build, they have to build a sort of a channel. Um, there's also, you need that downstream gradient, so if you're fully pumped, you can't just make water go upstream before you can make it go downstream if you're full. Um, another one is fish friendly gates, there's a bunch of um, designs out there, and basically all doing the same thing, trying to keep that gate open for a little bit longer and allowing that passage um, more freely. Um, one sort of things, if you've got a bad pump, why don't you just screen it? Um, uh, the thing, the issue with physically screening is to keep the male migrants out, you need about 10 to 15 millimetres. All our debris screens are about 50 um, millimetres wide. And um, if you start fine screening these pumps, then you're going to have to find a way to deal with all the macrophyte and weeds that come down the stream. And then you're going to need um, something like an automatic screen pan to deal with that. And you're coming into quite a lot of cost here. Um, I think we've got a quote for about $600,000 for an automatic screen cleaner. And you still haven't got passage, so you've just stopped them from dying. So, downside with that one. Um, so, if you can't physically screen them, then there's a whole lot of behavioural barriers that you could do where you basically use a negative um, uh, uh, stimulus to stop movement into where you don't want to go. So, there's a whole range of things you use bubble cushions. Uh, lights, uh, electrical fields, um, sound, uh, vibration, and then combination of light and vibration. The thing is, we don't really know um, how well these work, but we're pretty sure they're not 100% effective. But they do perhaps offer uh, a cheap and easy to install way of reducing the effect if we can. Um, finally, once we looked at our fish friendly pumps, and there's probably two major designs you can go for. Um, go with the Archimedes screw, the original flood pump. And uh, these work on the principle of the screw, and because, because they work quite slowly, as that, that blade is moving quite slowly, um, there's less strike of fish, and then um, more able to carry fish uninjured. And the modern designs now have uh, a fully cowled like this, so now there's no movement of the screw within um, the bed of it. There's no metal metal grinding or pinching of fish. And that is actually um, also hot, way more efficient. And also we now um, have variable levels, so they're more efficient at variable water levels. It used to be a bit of a problem with the screw pump. Um, the other pump design is an actual fish friendly, so this is very similar to what we already have, um, but they have a uh, specifically designed um, propeller system or impeller and some vanes, and they've been shown to radically reduce mortality. The advantage of these is they can pretty much, they're much easier retrofitted um, to, uh, to existing pump stations. Um, lastly, you can physically move the fish which are upstream or downstream and that's attractive, um, but logistically there's a lot of challenges to try and do that across our region at least. So the recommendations is evidence effectiveness of remedial options is lacking. Um, many carry significant costs, so um, we really need to trial options in New Zealand. Um, also need to prioritise our sites. Like I say, we've got 131 pump stations. Um, we need to rely 
one thing up. And there's also a need for collaboration between organisations to share learning and the costs and the risks involved. So basically we have a very large problem, um, a lot of uncertain tools, and so and probably and almost certainly a lot of money required to sort this out. So what we need is a plan. What we've come up with is, is a fish passage research and development program and implementation plan, which is a bit of a mouthful. But the purpose is to develop this community and stakeholder endorse or council stakeholder community endorse implementation plan which will ultimately guide council's future investment in this uh, addressing fish passage. And the idea is that this um, can be incorporated into the 2021-31 long-term plan, 10 year plan. Um, that seems a long way away, 2021, but the, the plan is involving a lot of action as well. So what it's got in it is we need to identify and fill knowledge gaps. We need to know about our asset types, the impact, the condition. And we have some of this information, but we just never really cast an ecological lens over it. Um, we need to know catchment characteristics, even delineation of the catchment. And we need to know something about fish communities, what's there or what should be there if there wasn't a um, structure in place. We need to develop a toolbox of proven remediation options. So that's actually putting in um, maybe Archimedes screw pumps or some of these electrical barriers and seeing if they work for us. We need to develop a catchment prioritisation uh, methodology. Just to illustrate that, I've got an example where we've just assumed, well, just based on catchment size, if we start taking, um, working on the largest catchments um, first, we can actually get within about 10 um, pump stations, we can get, we can halve um, their affected area. So prioritising can really increase the game to get early on. Um, we're also wanting to engage with partners and stakeholders throughout the development of this plan, identify uh, funding options, and develop an optimised programme of investment that uh, aligns with our existing renewals programme. So we've already got a programme where we're renewing um, existing structures that's aged or deteriorated. And we're going to be implementing the plan on trial catchments as well. So where we're at now basically is we're, we're um, funding to support the development of the plan has been applied for now for our 2018 to long-term plan. But in the meantime, we're already monitoring the effectiveness of a big fish friendly pump. So this has now been installed in one of our pump stations and um, we'll be monitoring the effectiveness of that in the upcoming uh, migration season early next year. Also continuing to trial electrical barriers and acoustic monitoring tools, which Bruno will talk about uh, soon. And we're including fish passage considerations in our existing renewals construction programme. So all our um, upcoming uh, programme uh, renewals and stuff are giving um, a bit of thought to how fish passage should be improved. 